John chapter 9. John chapter 9. The healing of the man born blind. There was a man born blind. And in my opinion, in my humble opinion, to me that would be one of the greatest physical ailments that you could have is uh, blindness. Because if you were paralyzed, you, you could learn uh, to read and you could use your mind and, and uh, you, could, you could learn and uh, get into books and God's Word. And, uh, or if you were deaf, but you could still walk around, but you, but you couldn't hear. But you could see. You could see where you're going. Or if you had another physical ailment. But to me, in my humble opinion, being born blind it would be one of the greatest physical ailments that you can have because we rely on our eyesight for everything. Everything. Learning, uh, colors, uh, where we're going, uh, how deep a hole is, to trip over something, uh, driving. I mean, we rely on it for everything. And so to be born without eyesight, to me, would be uh, one of the hardest physical ailments to deal with. And this man was born blind. John chapter 9 and verse 1, the Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? blind so here jesus is he walks by a man that's born blind and what do his disciples do they must have been you know uh good baptist good christians front row baptist right because they immediately said what is this guy's problem he must be a he's a sinner or his parents are a sinner because look what he's brought upon himself what did he do he must have done something i mean you're not just born blind. He must have sinned or his parents must have sinned. They immediately put it on him that he did something to cause this problem. And that's going to happen within the, the church community or Christian community because pe people are people and people are full of problems. But um, And if you've been in a church any amount of time, you've, you've heard it yourself. One man that was giving, getting gallstones out, and another man comes up and says, you know, the Lord's going to get those tithes and offering out of you one way or the other. And so he automatically assumes that the man has not been tithing, which is not right. Or if you see somebody that's going through a great physical ailment or need, and you go, well, that's because they're, no, you don't really know. And I would leave that one alone because God is liable to slap at something upon you. Yes, that's right, to humble you. Because a lot of times when we do that, or we think that, that is pride swelling up within us. Hey, I, I didn't do that. I'm not like that. I don't have that problem. What is wrong with them? And that's what they were saying. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. But Jesus quickly nipped that in the bud in the next verse. Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And so Jesus said, He didn't sin, or his parents didn't sin. He didn't do anything wrong. He was born with a physical ailment so that, that God's, should be manifest through him so that God could get glory through his ailment, through his physical debilitation, through his blindness. In verse number four, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So let me ask you, what's in your life? that God has allowed that he can make himself manifest through you so that others can see it. How are you taking that? Are you taking that as this is from God? This has passed through God's fingers and been allowed to lay upon my shoulders that this is a burden that I must bear that somehow, some way, God is going to be manifested through this and God is going to get the glory out of it because all things work together for good to those that love him, to those that are core to calling to his purpose, right? And whether we can see it or not does not matter. God can see it. God sees what's going on in people's hearts and minds. We cannot see that. And that is where the greatest work of God is done in the hearts and minds of people that you cannot see. Now, you can see the growth 
or the change if somebody gets born again or saved or they're spiritually growing, you'll start see, seeing that outward uh, aspects of it. But as it's happening, you cannot see their hearts and minds. You really don't know what's going on in there. But God does his greatest work when things are silent because he's working on the hearts and minds of people. And he said, I am the light of the world. Yes, he is. Jesus Christ is the light of the world you know that old the child song children's song this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine and that should be true if you're an adult too you should be letting your light shine so that others may see so that god can be made manifest through you and so verse number six when he had thus spoken he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle and he anointed the eyes of the lord or the eyes of the blind man with clay are you kidding me the guy jesus spit on the ground and made a clay ball and shoved it in his eye that's exactly what he did something that made absolutely no sense and so if you're going through a trial or you have an ailment god may be doing something that makes absolutely no sense to you i mean you would think there is no way how in the world can god get glory out of this it's a mess it's nothing but a mess it's a spitball mess but he can, but he can, but you must be obedient. Watch this, verse number seven. And he said unto him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Now you tell me, Jesus spit on the ground, made a, a mud ball, put it in his eyes. And that didn't heal him though. That didn't heal him. Jesus said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. Now, let me ask you, if that man had just wiped that out of his eyes and said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, I've ever seen. Are you kidding me? You're just embarrassing me. You're humiliating me. The man would have not gotten healed. He had to obey. So let me ask you, what ailments in your life? And God's telling you, this is where I want you. This is what I want you to do. And you say, this makes no sense. This is embarrassing and humiliating and degrading. But God says, just be obedient. And this man was healed because of his obedience. He went to the pool and he washed. So if you want a blessing, you must be obedient. I don't care what the situation, how bad it looks, how wrong it is, the most ridiculous thing God wants you to do because you cannot see the whole picture. We cannot, but God can. And He can bless you. God blesses obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. And so, going on with the story, after He went and washed, of course, after that, they couldn't believe it. Others were saying, is this the man? Is that really him? Is that, is that really him? Is that the man that's been born blind? But it was. In verse 10, he said, Therefore said they unto him, How are thine eyes opened? I'm sorry, verse 9. Some said that this is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. That's a great picture of somebody who was living in the world. They're just radical, man, living on the ragged edge, and they get born again, and people will start to say, Is that, was that really them? Did that really happen? Did, does it really change? But it really did. It really happened. It's really them. God really saved them. God really healed this man of his blindness. He said, It's really me. I am him, he says. And then they asked, Therefore, unto him, how was I eyes open? Then he told them, uh, Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said, Go and wash, and I receive my sight. Amen. He received his sight. It's a good picture of salvation. Be obedient. See, we're born blind. We're all born blind, spiritually speaking. Spiritually dead because we're born into sin. We're born sinners. You know, the funny thing about children is you don't have to teach them to lie or steal or cheat or hit somebody. They already know how to do that. You have to teach them how to be good, how to behave, how to tell the truth, how to act right. Why? Why is that? Because they're born with the sin nature. It's already in them. They already have that, right? And so that's why the Bible says you must be born again. That is the spiritual birth. That is the spiritual birth. That is when God, when you repent of your sins and God moves in and you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That is the spiritual birth.
And we'll talk about that more in a minute. And so in verse 13, they go to the Pharisees. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. Now the Pharisees were the great religious leaders of that day. You know, well-educated, well-polished, well-funded, uh, well-known. They were the great religious leaders of that day. And you could pick a religion out there if, if you'd like. And, and um, there's some that are just religious. There's nothing biblical about them. And that's exactly what the Pharisees were. They wanted the power themselves. And you can bet they did not like Jesus for having the power to heal because he said, I am the Son of God. And so verse 14, And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay upon my eyes and and I, and I washed and I do see. They were so worried that Jesus had healed him on the Sabbath day. They were looking for any reason to attack Jesus, any reason to tear him down, any reason to stone him to death. They could not stand it that Jesus had the power to heal, that Jesus truly was the Son of God. And I truly believe that many of them were convicted in their own heart to know that that's the Son of God, you see, because men love darkness and hate the light, the Bible says. And so if you are truly born again and you get around a person that has a dark heart and you're around them long enough, they're unsaved, see, they'll start to get convicted in their heart and they'll either, they'll either turn to Jesus Christ or they're going to turn on you and they will not want you around them because it's your light it's the light of Jesus inside you shining upon their dark heart. And see, there it shows them that their deeds are evil and they can't stand that. And so when the Pharisees saw Jesus, you see, because the Holy Spirit, God will open that person up and say, I know everything about everything. I know dates and times and places and specific sins and who they were with and what was done. And they can't stand that. It makes them very uncomfortable and they get very angry. And so... The Pharisees were, were very upset about this. In this verse 17, they said unto the blind man again, the second time, they say unto him, the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? Well, they didn't believe the first time. He, he told them, He put mud in my eyes, I went and washed, and now I can see. They didn't buy that. And so they asked him another time, What sayest thou? How, how did he do it? And so he tells them again, in verse number 18, But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight. They did not believe him at all. So what they did is they called his parents. And in the uh, end of verse number 18, the parents of him that had received his sight. So they called his parents in. So here comes his parents. And his parents said, Yes, this is our son. Yes, he was born blind. But how that he received his sight, we know not. They have no idea. And they said, Ask him. He is of age. He's 30 years old, right? But they, they said that for a specific reason. Not that they didn't know. Not that they didn't know Jesus was the Son of God. But this is why. It says, These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. His parents would not confess that. They would not say that. And you know, I'm not picking on his parents, but that's a good picture of a lot of people today. Nobody will stand up for what is right. People will not stand up for what's right. Why? Because it might cost me something. It might cost me some money. It might cost me my reputation. It might cost me this. It might cost me that. And so they, they weren't going to let that cost them being ex excommunicated. No, so they asked him. In other words, they were afraid. They were afraid because they had already said that if somebody was said that he's the Christ, they'll be cast out. And I'm not condemning them for that, but that's just what happened. And so the Bible goes on. In verse 26, they asked this man a third time. A third time. Verse number 24. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise, for we know that this man is a sinner. This man is a sinner. They were calling Jesus Christ a sinner. 
25, he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that there I was blind, and now I see. Now I dare say that this blind man, because he was at the mercy of, of what people would give him, he was begging. They would beg for, for food, beg for money. And so I dare say that he was at the synagogue on the outside begging that the Pharisees had walked by him many hundreds, if not thousands of times. Here he is 30 years old. And, and he says, and that's all they're worried about, that he healed him on the Sabbath day. And this man's a sinner. And this man basically says, I don't know. And I really don't care. All I know is I was blind, but now I see. Thank God for that. That's what it is with salvation too. I was blind, but now I see. And if you don't know what it means by blind, spiritual blindness is, the Bible says the God of this world, Satan, has people blinded. Blinded of what? The truth. Blinded of the gospel. You see, sin and Satan will keep you in some kind of weird la-la land to think that everything's great. You're just going to live forever. It's not going to happen to you. You can get it right tomorrow. You can get saved tomorrow. You can get right with God before you die. But let me tell you, you don't get a choice on how you die. You might linger a long time, but then again, you might walk out the back door and drop dead of a heart attack. You might get hit by a Mack truck tomorrow. You do not know how you're going to go. So anybody that's a real control freak thinks that they have the, all this, they're going to control things, and usually people like that are manipulators. They want to manipulate things. You don't have control of nothing important. You didn't control how you come into this world, and you can't control how you're going to leave this world. God's in control of that. So you can make yourself as big and bad as you want to, but God makes your heart beat, and He'll start and stop it whenever He pleases, because He is in control. The Bible says all things are held together by Jesus Christ. And that the span, the universe, fits in the span of God's hand. And we can't even see the end of the universe. We, we don't know hardly nothing about it out there. But the Bible says that it all fits in the span of God's hand. And the Bible also says that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And if you have breath in your body today, you can get right with the Lord. You can be born again. And so this man, he said, I, I, don't, I was blind, but now I see. Verse number 26, Then they said to him again, what did he do to thee? How did he open his eyes? All right, how many times are they going to ask him, right? I, I done told you, I done told you, I done told you. And then verse 27, he, that's exactly what he says. He answered them, and I have told you already. And ye did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? You want to hear it again? And I love this last part of the verse. Will ye also be his disciples? Ugh! It was like a jug in the, in the ribs, man. Uh, he, I believe the blind man knew that they were out to attack him, to put him down. Why? Because Jesus was really a threat to them because he really was and really is the Son of God. And they could not stand that. How dare somebody come along and take the power from us? We are the ones in control. We have the power. But they were completely powerless around Jesus. And that's there's a lot of truth to that. And so... He asked them, he says, are you also going to be his disciple? And that was like a jug in the, in the ribs, buddy, because he, he knew what they were really trying to do, trying to cut down Jesus is what they were trying to do. But he, he knew that, I, I don't know nothing about this man. All I know is I was blind, but now I see because of him. Verse 28, then they reviled him and said, thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. In other words, they got mad, they reviled him and said, no, we're not his disciple, you are. We're disciples of Moses. But they really weren't. If they would have been the real disciples of Moses, uh, Moses knew about Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to dig into that right now. But uh, as the story goes on, this man... In verse 29, we know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. We know not from whence he is. They really weren't worried about Jesus Christ. They didn't care that the man got healed. They didn't, they didn't care about none of that. All they cared about was getting rid 
of Jesus Christ. That was their goal, and they were after him any which way that they could. Many times the Pharisees tried to ensnare Jesus with their words, but yet they ensnared themselves. And Jesus made that manifest to them many times. And I like it how Jesus would just call them right out and tell them, Oh, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation to come? How can ye escape the wrath of God? Hell. He just told them right out, flat out how it is. And many times they reviled Jesus and they wanted to crucify him. They wanted to kill him. But he put it right out here. Here's the truth. And did it cost him? It did. But they didn't take his life. Jesus said, I lay my life down. No man can take it. For he hath all power, Jesus Christ does. And so the Bible goes on to say, since the world began, there has been nothing like this ever happened. Nobody's ever been born blind, and then they were healed. And that's in verse 30, 32. And they realized that nobody had ever been born blind and then been healed. I'm sure many had been born blind, but nobody had just come along and healed them out of nowhere, especially out of spittle and mud and you go and wash, right? Nobody. And so, verse number 34. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. They said, in other words, you sorry, low-down, good-for-nothing, little sinner, blind, lying, little, deceitful son of a gun. We don't like you. You're born a sinner. How dare you talk to us this way? Do you know who we are? Do you know our prestige, our position, our power? How dare you say something else, you little sinner? Get out of here. And they cast him out. They got rid of him. If they, couldn't con if they couldn't change his mind, if they couldn't manipulate him, just get away from me, in other words. And that's what they really wanted to do. They wanted to manipulate him. But listen, Jesus heard about this. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when they found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He asked him. And I ask you today that question. Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Verse number 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. He said, You are talking to the Son of God. You have now seen him literally with your physical eyes, because he had been healed. And I love this. Verse number 38, And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. He said, I believe. I believe. I thank God for that the day I got saved. The preacher preached on 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All. So anybody that believes in the, the elect doctrine that only the elect are saved, that, that verse blows that right out of the water. The Bible says He wants all to be saved, to all to repent. It's a command. You are supposed to. God did not make hell for any person. Hell was created for Satan, Lucifer, and the demons. And the biggest thing I hear is, well, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Now this man right here, he said, I believe. But I hear that today. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Well, that's great. But just being believing in God is not going to help you. It's not going to save you. The Bible says you must be born again. You know that Satan's a believer. You know that the demons and devils are believers. James 2.19 Thou believest there is one God, thou do as well. The devils and demons believe and they tremble. Why do they tremble? Because they know judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. And I tell you today, judgment is coming for you. And for me. See, Noah preached for 120 years about righteousness. That judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. And they laughed. And they mocked. And they scorned. But listen, on judgment day, it was too late. It was too late. They had heard the preaching. They had laughed. They had mocked. They had made their decision. It was over. Judgment day is here. And it's too late if you haven't repented. And the same for you. If you've never repented and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the day that you take your last breath and your heartbeat stops, it is too late. It is judgment time. Hebrews 9.27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. So judgment 
is coming. But let me go back to this. He said, Lord, I believe. What did he believe? He believed that he was a sinner. He believed that Jesus was the Son of God. He believed that if he put his faith in him, that he could save him. And not that he could save himself. Because the one world religion is today, I'm a good person. We want to believe we're good, but the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. Only God in heaven is good. And here's what most people really think. They think, well, my good outweighs my bad. That is not the way God is going to judge us. We don't even judge ourselves in the courtroom that way today. If you get caught for a crime and you go stand before a judge, he doesn't ask you, well, how many community hours have you done? And how much good have you done? And how much have you given away? And how much money have you given to the poor? He doesn't ask you none of that. He only looks at your crime. That's what you're there for. And it'll be the same way when you stand before God. You will give an account for the crime, for the sin that you have committed against God Almighty. And He's keeping a record of every last one of them. The Bible says that we'll give an account for every idle word spoken. Absolutely. Every thought, every deed, every action. And if you're not saved, I hope that scares you to death. Because the Bible says hell is where the worm dieth not, where the fire is not quenched, where there be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and gnawing of tongues. Hell is a real, literal place. The Bible says hell hath enlarged itself. Hell is in the center of the earth. And I, here's a thought for you. Look at the globe all around the world and look at all the volcanoes that are coming up. What are they doing and why is that? And how is it you can build a fire in your yard and, but then go out there and cover up with dirt and it goes out? Yet the center of the earth is on fire it's liquid hot magma, 2,000 degrees. And the scientists that don't even believe in God, they know this. It's proven that the center of the earth is hot. 2,000 degrees or hotter, right? How is that? Well, it's God created it. That's how it is. And by, that's where hell's at. And so like I said, how, why are these volcanoes blowing stuff out everywhere? Well, the Bible says that hell is never full. Hell hath enlarged itself. It'll hold as many as it needs to hold. There isn't, it'll never fill up. The Bible says straight and narrow is the way and few be that find it. But there's many ways, many and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, that leadeth to hell. So there's but one path to heaven, but there's a billion ways to hell. Pick your own way. The theme song in hell is, I did it my way. Right? And so when he said, I believe, I believe I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus can forgive me. I believe that Jesus can save me. That's what he was saying when I say I when he said, I believe. You say you believe that, Brother Mike? Oh yes, I believe. I believe I was a sinner. I believe I got born again. I believe I'm saved, washed in the blood on my way to heaven and telling every person I can about it. And is there many that don't like me? Absolutely. But listen, one day they will. It may be when they're dead. It may be when they're in hell. And they'll never forget the time that I talked to the, told them about the gospel. Told them how to be saved. And just like the rich man in Luke chapter 16, he lift up his eyes in hell, being in torment in this flame. And he could remember everything that happened while he was on this earth. He remembered his family, his father, his brothers. He said, please send someone to tell them not to come to this place the great evangelist from hell. And let me tell you, he's still there to this day. He'll never get out. He'll never escape. He'll never have no peace. He'll never have no rest. And that is what Jesus came to save you from. But like this man, you must know that you must be born again. Yes, I believe. And so, verse number 39, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. In other words, those that don't see, those that, that realize that, yes, I'm a sinner, Jesus is going to come in here and open your eyes. When you get saved, that's what he's talking about. Your eyes are literally open to the truth. 
You say, well, what are they open to? To the truth, the truth of God. Let me just say that I was so blind before I got born again, before I got saved, before God transformed me, that I would listen to all kind of wicked music. I mean, and sing about going to hell. There was ACDC, Highway to Hell, and there's millions singing it. And they're literally singing, I'm on the highway to hell. And they are. And I was on the highway to hell. Why would I be listening and singing something like that? Because I was blind. I could not see. My eyes have not been opened. But praise God, He reached down and transformed my heart. I am so thankful for that. And so that's what He means by He was blind. But now I see. But those that think they're not sinners, those that think I'm good enough, I'm a good person to make it, the Bible says that they are blind and they are on their way to hell. And you can bet that's the gospel sure enough truth right there, that they're blind and they're on their way to hell. They can't see it. They can't believe that a God would put them or allow them to go to hell. But God is not putting or allowing you. He made a way. And if you refuse it, it's on you because he offers it freely if you believe, if you'll repent. Verse number 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? That's what they asked. They heard this. They seen what Jesus had done. And they asked, Are we? Are we blind also? And I ask you today, Are you blind? Or can you see? Have you been born again? Has God opened your eyes? And that's what they're asking. Are we blind also? But listen to what Jesus says, verse 41. John chapter 9, verse number 41. Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. So in other words, if you're blind, you really don't believe you're a sinner. You don't believe that you're going to have to pay for your sin. Oh, and you hear people say, Well, yeah, I know there's a hell and... and uh, Sinners go there, and, but they, they, don't really, they don't really believe that. And if they do, they've completely lost their mind if they know they're on their way to hell and they're not going to do something about it. But most people, most people do not believe that they're going to go to hell. They don't believe that they're a bad enough sinner that God would put them in hell. And that's what he says. If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see... Therefore, your sin remaineth. You say you don't have no sin, but your sin remaineth. You say you're good enough to make it to heaven, but you can't do it. You say, you say, you say. Jesus said he came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, you won't go to the doctor if you don't think something's wrong. You won't go seek out a cure.